So my name is uh, Vermun Skøyen, and together with my co-authors uh, Narada Dilp uh, Vargaguda and Eivind Mikkel, uh, we created a um, paper called Seafloor Pipeline Detection with uh, Deep Learning. Uh, this was originally my master's project, where Eivind uh, and Narada were my supervisors. Uh, this is a work that's done in collaboration between the University of Oslo and the Norwegian Research uh, Defense Establishment. Uh, so let's quickly start with some motivation and context to why we want to do seafloor pipeline detection at all. Uh, so just on the Norwegian continental sh uh, shelf, there is actually more than 88,000 kilometers of gas pipelines. And that's not including oil pipelines, water pipelines, and other types of pipelines. And what we could imagine is that if there were to be damage to one of these pipelines, and in a worst case scenario, an oil or gas pipeline that would result in leakage uh, into the sea, uh, it would have high uh, economic and environmental costs. As a first step to avoid this, uh, we need to do inspections in order to determine the state of these pipelines. Uh, nowadays, uh, state-of-the-art uh, seafloor pipeline inspection is performed using autonomous underwater vehicles, specifically uh, Hugin. Uh, Hugin is developed by the Re Norwegian Research Defense Establishment in collaboration with uh, the Kongsberg Maritime. And the goal of such a seafloor pipeline inspection is to gather high quality information on the pipeline throughout its mission so that we can determine the state of the pipeline afterwards. What you can do with Hugin is you can plot a series of coordinates corresponding to the location of the pipeline, and then you can throw Hugin into the sea. And uh, uh, with the help of his inertial navigation system, he can navigate the plotted uh, coordinates. Uh, one problem with this, uh, uh, there are several problems with this approach. Uh, um, for example, that you might not have sufficiently accurately prior information on where the uh, pipeline is located beforehand. Uh, and even though you think you have, uh, you can also have uh, um, sea currents which will move the seafloor pipeline. So uh, your believed location might actually be a bit inaccurate. You will also inevitably have drifting in the inertial navigation system of Hugin. So throughout its mission, he might be uh, somewhat offset to the true location of the pipeline. Uh, all of this can result in uh, Hugin being uh, poorly placed uh, according to the pipeline, and thus all of the images that you take of the surrounding area might not even contain pipeline. So uh, one of the approaches that you can do to try to solve this is to use these payload sensors which are mapping out the surrounding area and the pipeline in order to detect the pipeline within this imagery uh, so that you can get a relative uh, position and orientation uh, of the, the AOV compared to the pipeline. And then you can uh, use this information to uh, better uh, relocate and reorient yourself so that you're able to take high quality imagery of the pipeline throughout your mission. Uh, Hugin has uh, several uh, such payload sensors for mapping out its surrounding uh, seafloor. Uh, uh, specifically the side scan sonar, an optical camera, and a multi-beam echo sounder. In our work, we have restricted ourselves to looking at the multi-beam echo sounder. Uh, there are four quantities I want to quickly go through from this uh, sensor. Uh, specifically, you have two spatial dimensions uh, uh, corresponding to the uh, along track and the cross track of the AOE, which are the pings and beams respectively. There are also two data channels uh, from these sensors that we consider, uh, which are called the reflectivity and depth. The reflectivity channel records the loss in intensity of the transmitted and recorded uh, signal. And uh, different materials will have a different ability uh, to reflect the signal. So for example, a seafloor might appear uh, quite protruding in this data channel compared to a muddy seafloor. Uh, additionally, you have this uh, depth uh, channel, uh, which uh, is calculated by recording the delay between the uh, time of the transmitted and recorded uh, time uh, signal. Uh, let's also look a little bit deeper onto the labels and uh, the data. 
So our data set is a collection of 15 seafloor pipeline inspection missions gathered by different Huguen areas uh, around the world. Uh, this data set uh, was never used for deep learning before and therefore didn't have any corresponding labels. And because of the peculiarities of the sensor and our task, there were no appropriate tools for creating these labels, nor were there uh, an appro appropriate task definition uh, for creating these labels. So prior to uh, the analysis work, we created such a tool, which you can see a snapshot here of, uh, on the right, and uh, we created the test definition and the corresponding labels. So in this snapshot, you can see the reflectivity and depth channels, and you can see uh, an image segment consisting of 1,000 pings and 400 beams. The pings, the pings goes from top to bottom and also indicate the, uh, the driving direction of the uh, AOV. Uh, additionally, we can see these uh, green marked points and a thin red line uh, connecting them, indicating the top of the pipeline, which are the labels. So uh, let's quickly look at our uh, model. Uh, our model is heavily inspired by the single shot detection uh, framework such as YOLO and uses the ResNet50 as a backbone architecture. Uh, the way we are able to use this model is by uh, considering 32 ping image segments as input to it. And then we want to ask the question, are there uh, seafloor pipelines within these uh, image segments? And if so, where are they? And this resembles uh, a lot the mainstream object detection models, uh, but there are uh, some differences. Uh, in particular, uh, our uh, classification task is binary. Is there uh, pipelines within these uh, regions of this uh, image segment? Yes or no? Uh, and we further want to specify the location of them if there are. But uh, we do so by instead considering image uh, Line, line segments instead of bounding box uh, regression coordinates, uh, which we can see at the bottom of the output of the model. Uh, these regression variables instead consider uh, line segment endpoints. So uh, this is not a completely novel idea. This is also something that resembles uh, a similar work in, for example, power line uh, detection. One of the unfortunate things about uh, um, changing the representation of your regression variable uh, output is that you no longer have an appropriate way of evaluating how well your model is at locating the pipelines. So uh, one, uh, one thing you could do, you could use the loss function, which is commonly uh, uh, used to be the mean squared error for, uh, for uh, training regression variables. You can also use that to evaluate how similar your uh, your predictions are to your labels. But as we see uh, in this illustration, we've tried to show that uh, one um, labeled line indicated by L and one predicted line indicated by L hat uh, will be uh, poorly evaluated, uh, even though they are very similar, which we indicate here by uh, them being very close to each other in the Y direction indicated by the epsilon. Uh, but uh, the points defining the lines are uh, very offsetted in the x direction. Uh, but if we zoomed out in the y direction, the lines would appear very similar. But if you use the mean squared error to uh, uh, calculate the dissimilarity between these measures, you would receive a very high value, specifically m1 squared plus m2 squared. And uh, intuitively, you think that these two lines are similar. So we instead propose to use the Hausdorff uh, uh, line distance uh, metric to measure uh, the similarity between these lines, which are indicated here by the uh, green lines instead. And in this case, the Hausdorff line distance evaluate these lines to be only epsilon difference, uh, which is more aligned with our intuition. Uh, additionally, you can also use, for example, the area between uh, the lines as such a measure. So now we have an additional way of uh, evaluating how well our model uh, also does on the regression uh, refinement task. Uh, an interesting uh, uh, thing to also notice with these regression uh, evaluation functions is that they are differentiable almost everywhere. 
meaning that we can actually directly optimize them and not only use them as evaluation functions. So we also try to uh, train our models using these as loss functions. <clears throat> so uh, here we have uh, a summary of the performance of the models in both the classification and the regression uh, task. Uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the rows, we see uh, three different uh, deep learning models, or the same deep learning model, but trained with three different regression uh, loss function: the mean squared error, the host of line distance, and the area between lines. Lastly, we have the baseline, or rather the summary statistics, which uh, is what we try to compare against, uh, because we try to. Uh, evaluate whether we can use deep learning within this uh, uh, framework on this data set with these labels and this label format. We create a relatively simple baseline, which uh, only predicts the highest likelihood of uh, their containing pipeline within uh, regions of the input uh, or not according to the global uh, statistics of the data set. And as we can see, the baseline gets a relatively high accuracy of almost 92%, which also shows that we have a fairly uh, unevenly distributed data set. Uh, but we also see that the deep learning models uh, trained with these different regression functions uh, gets a much higher F1, F1 score. And we also see that they uh, outperform the baseline in the regression refinement task uh, here evaluated in the host turf line distance and the area between uh, lines functions. Uh, additionally, we can see that uh, uh, the house turf uh, line distance and the area between lines are achieving a much higher mean squared error uh, uh, evaluation, which uh, also uh, shows that uh, the mean squared error isn't necessarily a good uh, metric for evaluating uh, regression refinement. So <clears throat> uh, a, uh, for a quick conclusion and future work, uh, we showed that uh, this uh, data set that we have of 15 C4 pipeline inspection missions uh, within the framework uh, uh, of this label format and the labels that we propose uh, are, uh, and within the deep learning framework of single shot detection, uh, uh, that these models are able to solve this uh, task uh, relatively well. Uh, additionally, we showed that the mean squared error is a poor evaluation measure for measuring uh, line similarity and we propose to instead use the house turf line distance or the area between lines. Uh, and interestingly, we also showed that these are uh, um, differentiable almost everywhere, so we can also optimize them directly. Um, for future work, it would be interesting to try to combine this classification mesh measure and this line uh, regression evaluation into one uh, succinct evaluation function similar to something like a mean average precision in mainstream object detection, uh, where you could, for example, uh, replace the intersection over union with either the house of line distance or the area between lines. Uh, furthermore, we uh, also want to uh, explore uh, ways of uh, combining uh, individual detections into one coherent track over arbitrary uh, many things. And uh, with that, I uh, would like to uh, thank you for the attention.